Welcome to Audit the Audit, where we sort out the who and what and the right and wrong of police interactions. This episode covers the right to remain silent, officer conduct, and stalking, and is brought to us by a private submission. On September 6, 2024, Officer Delgadillo of the Rigby City Police Department responded to a call at the home of an individual named Barbara, who called the police after a citizen named Braden took a photo of her as he passed her home. Officer Delgadillo was later joined by Trooper Roberts of the Idaho State Police, and the encounter was captured on Officer Delgadillo's body camera. Ten four. Thank you. Hey, Del. Yep. Hi. So, I've been being gang stalked. Okay. Okay. Started with that house right there. I'm gonna get out of the sun. Okay. Concerned about this house? No. It's so. Chief gave my personal information about 18 months ago. Okay. Okay. The guy came over and started chewing me out because I drove for a female situation to one block to the dollar store. Okay. Okay. I trespassed him with craning. Okay. Okay. He has been going to different places and starting stuff anywhere he can, like catching rabbits he thinks are mine because I feed straight animals. Okay. okay. That includes cats. It includes Squirrels, I don't care. They're hungry. Mm -hmm. Okay. Apparently, he's been going around the neighborhood showing off the animals he's catching that he thinks are mine. Okay. The guy has a sick obsession with me. I'm going to go get a RO, I think. Mm -hmm. Now, this guy down here, um, he's been driving up and down my street. He's one of his friends. And is he driving or is he on that bike? bike. He's on okay. that bike. And he's, like, taking pictures of me going, I'm going to post it on social media. Okay. So we have another stalker. But this guy right here, if he intends to dox me in the neighborhood I live in, or the town I live in, that's illegal. So its intent is to cause emotional distress. Mm -hmm. I'm already living next to asshole one, and asshole two, and asshole three. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I need you, pretty please, to go down there. I think he might have dumped that bike and bailed because I think he thought I was kidding when yeah. I said I'm going to call the cops. Yeah, well, I see someone on the corner over there with the bike. Okay, well, that's sitting him. Sitting on a bike. Is and he's him? laughing. He has, like, man bun? Yeah, that's him. Yeah. I'd advise ISP to make contact with the Mel, and I'll head over and make contact with him. Is he still there? Yeah, he's over there. Cool. I'm sure he's going to start some shit. Maybe. Gotcha. Uh, I'm going to go over there with him. Okay. J3 out with 930. Hi. What's up? What are we up to? Just down about. Okay. Did you pass by that residence over there? Of course. I have a friend that lives down there. Okay. Who's your friend? At this time, you do because you're a suspect. Actually, you're a suspect I have a Fifth of Amendment a, right. But that's not a Fifth Amendment right. To not to answer questions to cops. Yeah. Are you? You're not under arrest. <laughs> you actually believe that, don't you? Huh? You actually believe that, don't you? Okay. I legally do not have to answer any of your questions, sir. Well, at this point, you're detained, so you do, because you're a suspect of a stalking. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I'm just simply ask, asking questions and mm -hmm. okay. we'll go from there. You will go about your day, I'll go about my day. Let's okay. just make it easy, man. Okay. Okay. Who's your friend that was over there? I plead the friend. Plead the friend. Okay. What's your name? I plead the friend. Okay. 
Braden claims that he has a Fifth Amendment right not to answer questions, and Officer Delgadillo disagrees. As we have discussed before here on ATA, the Fifth Amendment states that, quote, no person shall be compelled in any criminal case to be a witness against himself. Now, while it might seem obvious that this privilege against compelled self-incrimination would protect citizens from being required to answer questions while being detained by the police, courts who have considered the issue have consistently punted on questions regarding whether the Fifth Amendment creates a right to refuse to answer questions during a Terry stop. However, despite the reluctance of courts to recognize the right to remain silent during investigative detentions, there is a strong argument to support Braden's assertion that the Fifth Amendment does allow citizens to refuse to answer potentially incriminating questions during a Terry stop. In the 1966 case of Miranda v. Arizona, the Supreme Court stated that, quote, there can be no doubt that the Fifth Amendment privilege is available outside of criminal court proceedings and serves to protect persons in all settings in which their freedom of action is curtailed in any significant way from being compelled to incriminate themselves. While the Supreme Court held in the Miranda case that the Fifth Amendment only requires that law enforcement officials advise suspects of their right to remain silent and to obtain an attorney during custodial interrogations, which would not include a typical Terry stop detention, this does not necessarily mean that the Fifth Amendment right to remain silent does not apply in non-custodial situations. Rather, due to the lower level of so-called inherently compelling pressures involved in an investigative detention, the procedural safeguards known as Miranda warnings are not required to ensure that the detainee has a full opportunity to exercise the privilege against self-incrimination. The right to refuse to answer questions during Terry stops is also supported by Supreme Court so-called dicta, which are statements and court opinions that are not considered to be legally binding. Justice White's concurring opinion to the infamous Terry case noted that during an investigative detention, now quoting Justice White, the person may be briefly detained against his will while pertinent questions are directed to him. Of course, the person stopped is not obliged to answer, answers may not be compelled, and refusal to answer furnishes no basis for an arrest, although it may alert the officer to the need for continued observation. Citing this concurrence favorably, a unanimous Supreme Court decision in the 1984 case of Berkmer v. McCarty argued that during a Terry stop, quote, the officer may ask the detainee a moderate number of questions to determine his identity and to try to obtain information confirming or dispelling the officer's suspicions. But the detainee is not obliged to respond. However, it must also be noted that in the 2004 case of Heibel v. 6th Judicial District Court of Nevada, the Supreme Court determined that these statements did not mean that a state could not compel a suspect to disclose his name during a Terry stop while not addressing the issue of whether a right to refuse to answer questions existed. The Heibel Court also determined that the Fifth Amendment was not violated by applying a stop-and-identify statute to an individual who put forth no evidence that his name would be potentially incriminating, leaving open the question of whether the privilege against self-incrimination would apply if an individual's identity was potentially incriminating, and stated that the narrow scope of the disclosure requirement was essential to this finding, indicating that the Fifth Amendment Amendment may protect against compelled answers to more substantive questioning. Needless to say, this issue is immensely complicated, and there is much more that we could discuss in exploring this topic, including the possible impact of the First and Fourth Amendment on the right to remain silent. However, given the unsettled nature of the case law on this subject, it is impossible to predict whether any given court reviewing the issue would agree with Braden's position or Officer Delgadillo's. So you do have to identify yourself when Not being correct. requested. That you do have Absent to reasonable you suspicion? Or re no, reason he has, reasonable no, he, articulable he, he, suspicion? So he does have reasonable articulable suspicion, right? Mm -hmm. Is there a restraining order against him? Or stop, anything like that? But she, no, she wants to get one. Oh, she so that's why she one. wants to get him identified so she can go okay. to the courthouse and oh, okay. go about that. Okay. So she's not even going to press charges, she just wants to get a protection order. That's it. She can't press charges, I didn't do anything. Can she come down here and identify him? She identified him from over there. Oh, well, yep. there you go. Mm -hmm. She described a man bun, guy on a bike. Okay. Um, Riding on a public street. Yeah. Taking pictures. Okay. I'm still not seeing anything illegal there. So you were taking pictures? Is that what you said? Sure. Of her? I needed to post on a uh, public page on Facebook. Well, okay. where was she when you took the pictures? On her property. Then she has reasonable expectation of privacy. Mm -hmm. No, she doesn't. Where was she at on her property? In front of her front door. In plain view. In plain view? So, 
you just, I just want to make sure I understand, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. You, you seem like a savvy guy. Mm -hmm. Don't want to pull anything fast over you. Okay. For sure. I make a mistake, you call me out on it. Good. Mm -hmm. Right? Because I don't want my constitutional rights infringed upon either. Of course. I'm right. right. So you drove by this individual's house, mm -hmm. or rode, rode on your, right, okay. Fair Regardless enough. of the public roadway and stuff like that, we get it. You didn't trespass. Right. Okay. You did all that right. You saw her standing on her, in front of her door on her property, mm -hmm. and you felt the urge to take pictures of her. I've been meaning to for a while, okay. so I can. I'm trying to black black or what's the word blacklist her. You're trying to blacklist her from a certain industry. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, and then you want to post those pictures? Of course. Okay. And what's the intent of posting those pictures? Blacklisting. Blacklisting. And what does she need to be blacklisted from? Uh, purchasing rabbits. Purchasing rabbits? Yes. Okay. So, like, are you thinking like a, a community page like yes. Craigslist or something like that? Something or like Facebook that. Marketplace? Something like that. Okay, cool. So, your intent is to take pictures of her, say, everybody, don't let this lady buy rabbits from you. Is she harming them in any way? Um, not directly. Okay. Domestic rabbits are not meant to be roaming free. Oh, so she's taking like a pet and then like setting it free? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, all right. So, uh, let's see, when was it? Not within like last two-ish weeks, I've been helping basically everybody on the street catch the loose rabbits. Okay, cool. I caught nine in six days. What kind of rabbits are they? Um, I think... A mixture between, um, I think some had silver fox, had the looks of silver fox, some were obviously Flemish giant, okay. some had the look like they had Rex mixed in there. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, how'd you find out that she was doing all this? Um, Facebook. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. So she's yeah, like... It, it's been a huge problem for three years. No kidding. Okay. Is this... Your first time taking pictures of her? Yeah. Okay. First time passing by her house? Uh, not passing by her house, because I, okay. I go to my friends. Okay, okay. okay. I'm just going to take your word for it okay. that you got a friend over there. Okay. She wants a restraining order against you. Okay. She's already identified you. Does okay. she know your name? No. Okay. So, that's, you're not under arrest, uh. like he said. That's all she wants to do is just say, hey, sure. I don't want him coming over here within maybe, what is it, typically like 300 feet? 300 feet, yeah. 300 feet and taking pictures of me. Mm. I find that reasonable. Okay. I don't know if you do, but you did get the information you need, and you did get the information you need to blacklist her. I won't her. be taking pictures of her again. I love that. Okay. I do love that. She still has the right, just like you do, to file a complaint okay. and file uh, a protection order. Protection. Okay, a protection order. Not a restraining order, mm -hmm. but a protection order. Are you cool with that? Um, not if it means giving up my Fourth Amendment rights. What's your Fourth Amendment right right now? To stay, um, what's the word, uh, secure my papers and facts. Okay, do no, no. You, that's fine. Name, date of birth. That still falls within mm -hmm. papers and facts. Well, if you give it to us, that's why we're saying consent, right? This is going to be their case anyway. It just makes it easier. I don't know how your policy goes on what he does, but I think you've been very reasonable. Mm -hmm. I think you're passionate about it. I love the fact that you explained it to us. Uh -huh. To me, that dispels any kind of major suspicion that you're just some guy. I see, are you married? Uh -huh. So it, it dispels any suspicion for me that you're like, this married right. dude that's going along taking pictures of women next to their doorstep sure. and things like that. For sure. I like that. You're trying to save animals? I'm good with that. In fact, I have a dog that you could, if you wanted a dog, so I'm incredibly <laughs> allergic to him. Um, but, um, not on the size of property I have. <laughs> okay, gotcha, gotcha. I understand that. So, but anyway, that's that's what we're here for. When, you, when I pulled up, what were you doing here? I assumed you guys would like to speak with me. Okay. And so I figured I'd give you the courtesy. I have okay. nothing against law enforcement. I have the only time I have anything against law enforcement is if you violate rights 
or break laws yourself. I'm down with that. Yeah. Huh? I'm not a thin blue line guy. Uh -huh. uh, if a cop does something, like, I have no problem arresting you. One time my, my sergeant actually said, would you like to go arrest a marshal? He's dealing drugs out of his patrol vehicle. Oh, and I was like, send me out of it. I, I got no problem doing any of that. that. Um, none at all. So I don't want to infringe upon your rights. Um, I do, and I'll go double check this, but the reasonable suspicion of you stalking is that you are going there taking pictures of her while she's on her property outside her door. Mm -hmm. um, so that's the reasonable articulable suspicion of possible stalking. There's suspicion that you are stalking here when you do that. Do you know what I mean? That's fair. But you said possible, so that right. But that's that's the reasonable suspicion, right? It's reasonable. To, I believe so. Like, if I'm at a bank and I see a guy take out a rifle and sling it over his shoulder, mm -hmm. not a violation of any law. He can do that. If he puts on a mask, still not a violation of any law. For sure. However, I can articulate that this guy's probably going to go do something crazy in that bank, and I'm going to intercept him, and I'm going to talk to him. I will detain him until I can figure out whether or not. For sure. So. So that is where we're at with the reasonable suspicion. Mm -hmm. You did everything right, public roadway, all that stuff, but then you took pictures of her. For sure. Trooper Roberts argues that the officers have reasonable suspicion to believe that Braden is, quote-unquote, stalking, based on Barbara's allegations. According to Section 18-7906 of the Idaho Code, quote, A person commits the crime of stalking in the second degree if the person knowingly and maliciously engages in a course of conduct that seriously alarms, annoys, or harasses the victim, and is such as would cause a reasonable person substantial emotional distress, or engages in a course of conduct such as would cause a reasonable person to be in fear of death or physical injury, or in fear of the death or physical injury of a family or household member. The statute defines the term course of conduct as meaning, quote, repeated acts of non-consensual contact involving the victim, provided, however, that constitutionally protected activity is not included within the meaning of this definition. The statute goes on to explain that, now quoting again, non-consensual contact means any contact with the victim that is initiated or continued without the victim's consent, that is beyond the scope of the consent provided by the victim, or that is in disregard of the victim's expressed desire that the contact be avoided or discontinued. The quote continues, Non-consensual contact includes, but is not limited to, following the victim or maintaining surveillance, including by electronic means, on the victim, contacting the victim in a public place or on private property, appearing at the workplace or residence of the victim, entering onto or remaining on property owned, leased, or occupied by the victim, contacting the victim by telephone, or causing the victim's telephone to ring repeatedly or continuously, regardless of whether a conversation ensues, sending mail or electronic communications to the victim, or placing an object on or delivering an object to property owned, leased, or occupied by the victim. Therefore, while it is possible that taking a photograph of Barbara outside her home could be considered non-consensual contact, Braden was clearly not engaged in a so-called course of conduct against Barbara, as she had informed the officers that this was her first experience with Braden, and the statute requires that an individual engage in repeated acts of non-consensual contact in order to be convicted. Additionally, the statute explicitly excludes so-called constitutionally protected activity from the definition of a course of conduct. And as the First Amendment protects the right to take photographs, Braden would have a strong argument that his action in photographing Barbara from public property was constitutionally protected activity. As such, it is unlikely that a court would find that the officers had reasonable suspicion to detain Braden for a potential stalking offense, because Barbara did not allege that he was engaged in repeated acts of non-consensual contact, and there were no facts available to the officers to suggest otherwise. How many pictures did you take? One. Well... Was it like a burst? Technically, it was a, a video, because I was on my... I was riding oh. past, and I didn't want to stop. Okay. Um, were you just like... Pretty much. Like this? Yes. Did she say anything to you? She asked if I, she wanted me to post, or if I wanted her to post. Pose? Pose. So, essentially, she was accepting the photos. So... <laughs> yeah. So that kind of dispels that. Yeah, no, see, this is why we have these conversations, sure. man, because it helps us to know exactly what we need. For sure. Um, let me go look up a couple codes real quick to make sure that uh, I'm squared away on everything. Um, 
If I find a code though that says that based upon reasonable articulable suspicion, you have to identify yourself mm -hmm. for these purposes, I'll okay. explain that whole entire code to you. Okay. Um, and then, uh, but yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna leave this up to the man. Okay. So I'll be right back. Okay. If you do decide to pursue it, I would like a supervisor. I don't have a supervisor. I'm I'm sure you do. I don't. Are you like a uh, are you a supervisor? No, I'm the only unit on for the city. So Yeah, so don't don't think that I'm like trying to harass or anything. Oh, I'm just trying to, I you know. know, get everything squared away but and stuff I would like hate, that. So I really would hate to have to file a lawsuit over Fourth Amendment. Yeah. I really would. I, yeah. that's that's not what I'm here on this street to do. For sure. And that, that's why we had the discussion for sure. when we're on the same page now, right? For because sure. I come over here hearing her side, but you also have a side to yeah, the story. For sure. Yeah. So I'm just trying to get everything together and for go sure. from there. So, <clears throat> so you can go Thank ahead you. and check that out, and then I'll talk to my partner real quick. Because, yeah, I, I don't think that she wants to press any charges or anything like that. The only comment that she made is that she wanted to get a protection order against her. She's going to have to go to court for that, though. For what? Like for the protection order? Yeah, yeah, she has to go to the court and fill it out and state why she wants to get the protection order filled out against him. Hello? Hi, Barbara. This is Trooper Roberts from the State Police. How are you? I'm doing all right. Hey, I was wondering if you uh, knew the name of that individual. Um, I, do, I do not. I think he's friend though. Well, do you, do you have any messages with him at all? Have you been in, in communication with him? I don't know. You don't know if you've spoken like via Facebook Messenger or Texas. What's that? You don't know if you've spoken to him through Messenger or text message or anything like that? No, I'm not Okay. Alright, the reason I'm asking it just makes it harder to identify him. So uh, you need to be able to identify him. I went to the police academy many years ago, sir. You can identify him just on the fact that he's harassing me in my own yard. Okay, so I appreciate that you went through the academy 30 years ago, but things have really changed completely since then. You have probable cause. So we don't have probable cause. And if we have a misdemeanor okay. that's not committed in our presence, we can't arrest anyway. So we're working on asking you to so identify. We're, I'm asking you to identify. So we're, we're working on identifying it right now, okay? okay? So I was just calling you to see if you had any messages or anything like that. Where did you serve? I took a powder. Um, all I'm asking you to do is do your job and identify him so that there's a record of you stalking me. Okay, that sounds good. Alright, what's your badge number, please? 4091. Thank you, have a great night. Thank you. Alright, uh, dude, you said. You have messages messages with her? I do. Okay. So she she uh, initiated that. Okay, that's fine. She says that she doesn't know if she does. Um, I looked at codes, you know, a lot of it's you know, if I pull somebody over, driver, of course they have yes. to. You're a pedestrian, mm -hmm. it's a different story. Yeah, and Idaho uh, does not have an official stop they, and ID. Law they don't. Or, no, they don't. So my reasonable suspicion at this point uh -huh. is just dispelled. Okay. I think, honestly, you went over there. Uh -huh. Before it wasn't, dude. I'm going to be honest, okay? <laughs> right. Before it wasn't. Um, and I, and I, I do apologize if I came off as like a hard ass for... You're, you're, you're fine, dude. You're fine. But I am, if, I am if a first did... I'm a constitutionalist, so... Good, good. <laughs> uh, that's what I'm registered as. Yeah. After the body camera footage ends, the officers and Braden parted ways without further incident. Following the interaction, Braden acquired the body camera footage and police reports from the incident and filed a formal complaint against Officer Delgadillo, requesting constitutional training. Braden also told me that he sent a commendation to the state police for Trooper Roberts because he personally felt that the trooper did a good job by taking the time to make sure that he was operating within the bounds of his authority. Overall, Officer Delgadillo and Trooper Roberts get a B 
minus. Because although the officers maintain professional demeanors throughout the encounter, and ultimately reach the correct conclusion regarding the legality of Braden's conduct, they demonstrated a lack of knowledge regarding the criminal laws that it is their duty to enforce. This was a challenging grade to assign, as the officers had some successes and some failures in this interaction, and I think it is important to acknowledge both the areas where the officers excelled, and also the areas where they could improve in future encounters. Both officers remained professional and respectful throughout the interaction, and Trooper Roberts in particular was incredibly successful in building rapport and trust with Braden. And while the officers eventually determined that Braden's conduct did not violate any criminal laws, they only did so after arguing to Braden that they had the reasonable suspicion necessary to detain and identify him for stalking when it is likely that a court would conclude that they did not. I greatly appreciate that the officers were willing to admit what they did not know and do research to determine if Braden had committed a crime, but during this encounter, they demonstrated a lack of knowledge regarding both the potentially applicable criminal statutes and when officers may demand identification from citizens. For much of the encounter, the officers seemed unsure about what they should do to resolve the situation, which resulted in a fair amount of of what I would call floundering, and they were unwilling to tell Barbara that Braden was not required to identify himself. On the whole, I believe that the right outcome was reached and that the encounter was overall a positive, but I would encourage the officers to work on improving their knowledge of the laws that are necessary to their duties. Braden gets an A+, for remaining respectful and positive throughout the encounter, successfully refusing to identify himself when he was not required to do so, and fostering positive communication with the officers regarding the relevant legal issues. It is important to note that despite the fact that Braden is not a First Amendment auditor, he demonstrated a solid understanding of his constitutional rights and is clearly committed to defending those rights. Unlike many citizens that we meet in these encounters, Braden seemed to understand that the officers had a job to do that included investigating the call they received from Barbara. And rather than expressing anger at the officer's attempt to understand the situation, Braden was willing to explain his unusual behavior behavior, which he knew was entirely legal. Braden also chose to wait for the officers and engage in a consensual encounter. And while these decisions may have ended poorly if Braden met a different set of officers, in this situation it helped resolve the situation amicably and with the proper outcome. It is important to bear in mind that Braden is not an auditor, and he did not engage in any conduct intended to involve members of law enforcement. Braden is a normal citizen who happened to find himself in a police interaction, and this grade is a reflection of that. Given the often convoluted nature of the right to silence, it is unreasonable for the average citizen to understand the legal nuances surrounding this topic. However, that degree of leniency doesn't necessarily apply to individuals who intentionally engage with the police, like... First Amendment auditors. Although Braden earned an A plus in this situation, and rightfully so, an auditor who intentionally interacts with the police may not have received the same grade. Let us know if there is an interaction or legal topic that you would like us to discuss in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to check out my second channel for even more police interaction content.